Okay, hello everybody. How are we doing here? Fine, good. Good. We're going to be going through a uh, panel discussion here talking about using technology to connect outside of the classroom. And um, obviously one of the things that's so exciting about uh, our topic is that I think right now, just the five of us, we're all over the world. So uh, it's, it's sort of a living, breathing experience of what we're going to be talking about. Um, so let's, let's just sort of jump right on in here and maybe we could each take a moment just to say where we're from and what brought us together here um, th this morning for me. I, I know we're all over the place, but for me, it's 11 o'clock here. Uh, why don't we start with Amita and tell us where you're from and just sort of give us a real quick one too. Yeah, myself is Amita from India. Uh, here we have 8.30 p.m. And uh, it's an honor for me to be with you all, the eminent panelists and the guests on such an auspicious day. And uh, I myself is a graduate from business management, did my master's from Delhi University and uh, associated with uh, Microsoft since uh, last four years and uh, have been into teaching from last 18 years. So uh, my teaching is from university level to school is quite a big journey. And uh, I am really thankful to educators like you and uh, the resource persons who are giving us the opportunity to interact and uh, giving us the opportunity to learn and share. I mean to say, uh, it is very important and globally uh, when it comes into action, that means a lot, means it is not benefited for the teachers. It is for the students who are the future uh, generations and uh, we are the teachers because of them. And uh, it's an honor to be here again. Thank you, Amita. That's wonderful. Yes, we appreciate you being here, too. You're certainly a part of the uh, global experience that we're having here. Uh, Martha, how about you give us a real quick hello? Hi, everyone. My name is Martha Bongiorno. I'm a library media specialist in the state of Georgia. I have my EDS from the University of Georgia in Instructional Technology and School Library Media. Um, my journey as an educator went from uh, helping to start the first K-8 STEAM school in the state of Georgia and has transitioned to offering professional development uh, for our teachers and for our students um, and working to promote change within the school building from a different uh, classroom, just a larger classroom in the school. So I'm excited to be with you all and learn and grow together. Hey, thank you, Martha. Thank you. Uh, Yogesh, where are you from, buddy? Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, this is uh, Yogesh from uh, again India, <clears throat> and uh, presently I am uh, uh, sitting uh, in the Shimla. Uh, that is uh, outside is very cold right now, uh, and uh, about as an educator, as a teacher, presently I am working in uh, Navodaya Vidyalaya Samiti, which is. Uh, uh, one of the best, I should say, organization in the world, which is providing uh, free education to the students. Uh, secondly, I'm, I'm working as a postgraduate teacher biology uh, with this, uh, in this system for the last uh, 18 years. And uh, before joining uh, this uh, Navodaya Vidyalaya Samiti, uh, I served uh, in an education college as a uh, lecturer in uh, teaching of uh, life sciences. Uh, I'm also associated in India uh, with the uh, NCRT, that is the premier institute uh, 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 in India uh, related to that uh, policy making and uh, related to this education system. Uh, so many seminars and all that things. Uh, uh, I have attended at seminar uh, at NCRT National uh, Council for Education Research and Training in India, and uh, also at the international level, I am uh, connected with uh, so many uh, organizations uh, like uh, hundred organization. I am connected and. Uh, uh, with Microsoft also, I am associated uh, since 2017. 
so uh, this is uh, a great opportunity uh, for me uh, to be part of uh, this group uh, uh, interacting with the, all the educators uh, throughout the world sharing exchanging views uh, learning something new thank you and uh, looking for uh, the great conversation thank, thank you, you rob thank you yogesh okay uh, last but certainly never least kemi uh, why don't you give us a little bit about yourself I mean, don't forget to unmute, unmute yourself. There you go. So, all right. Uh, my name is Kemi and in full, I am called Lua Kemi. I am uh, I'm an educational technologist by training. I have a work with the university here at the teachers uh, faculty of education where we train teachers in the use of technology in the classroom. Um, besides that, I also have uh, an educational technology consult that I run where I help schools integrate technology into the teaching and learning process and um, help to best maximize the use of technology in class. I consider myself a global educator and uh, I think my major milestone on this journey began when I joined the Microsoft Innovative Educator community and so I began to have network with educators from around the globe and we began to not just get to know one another but begin to connect our classrooms and also began collaborations across the globe so um i'm glad to be here this well this evening because for me it's like 4 p.m in nigeria here <laughs> very Hello, cool Tom. thank you so much everybody Hi, <laughs> My name's Rob Furman. I am in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Actually, more specifically, I'm in South Park, Pennsylvania. It has absolutely nothing to do with the cartoon. Uh, I'm an elementary principal. Uh, yeah, to make matters worse, I named my second child Kyle. So I am actually uh, the father of Kyle from South Park. Yes, Martha, you find that funny. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. But anyways, we're going to have a great conversation here, and it's so neat to watch the chat. Uh, we have people from Argentina, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, Sweden. It's just such a, a great experience to have this global collaboration because that's our conversation. Um, so we're talking about using technology to connect these students all around the world. Um, and I think before we get into the how we do that, probably the most important thing that we all need to agree upon would be uh, why. Why do, we, why do we see this as something important? Uh, why do we feel like our kids need to be connected uh, on a global scale? Um, anyone can feel free to, to jump in first and uh, let's get this conversation going. Amita, go ahead. Yeah, uh, I think the global co uh, collaboration gives uh, all the face-to-face -face interaction between the students of multilingual uh, thoughts they come up with, they came about the new curriculums, they came about the new cultures of uh, different uh, countries. And uh, the most important thing is that really improves their communications. Communications means they love to share with each other. And uh, the most important thing that gives coitest students a voice. The students who feel shy while uh, interacting in the class. Uh, in, within the four walls of classroom, they are not very much, uh, I think they don't feel comfortable. While they, when they are interacting globally with the different students from different parts of the world, so they feel uh, graced. And uh, really, the I, I feel myself, they become more confident. And uh, what learn empathy. Empathy is the main thing that come into their place and uh, they became more uh, the bonding, the sharing. Plus in them is awesome. Yeah. I, uh, yes. Can I, oh, can I come in there? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Kemi, then we'll get Martha <laughs> second. Okay, sorry. I, I just think that the world is becoming more interconnected. Yes. due to the digital advance, um, technological advancement that we're experiencing and our borders are beginning to kind of um, disappear. So it's, it becomes quite imperative for our students to begin to learn how to um, think globally, 
live globally, work globally, you know, have this, um, become globally competent. So connecting our classrooms and having this kind of global connections will help to develop the skills that our students need to know how to live and learn and work in the global village that technology has created. Absolutely. Martha. Um, I'm not going to lie. I started using Skype uh, about six years ago just to teach the content that I was teaching. I was teaching social studies and I wanted to teach about, you know, geography and history and all that. But really what I was starting to see with our students is just all that encompasses that Anita was talking about with communication skills and learning different perspectives other than your own. But really the heart of what I'm seeing, and I've worked in a Title I school and now I'm working in a very um, high income area, is the empathy that is fostered. When you start breaking down your classroom walls and starting to see how other people are living in that, that windows and mirrors aspect of education gets to the heart of why this is so important. If we're going to move forward with our society and move forward with the issues that are facing us, we need to all be in that together. And at the heart of that requires empathy. And it's not sympathy that we need. We really need to put each other in other people's shoes to see how we can solve those issues. So that's really what my passion has become. I'm kind of sad to say that it's taken me this long to realize that, but I'm glad that we're here and we can start learning and growing together. Absolutely. And, and I've noticed that I do a lot of presenting um, with in some international conferences like ISTE and things like that. And, and the other thing I've noticed is um, one of my friends, for example, let me tell you a quick story here. They work with, I believe it's uh, Digital Promise. And in her meetings, her daily meetings, she goes into an office with a, uh, a platform, a, a TV screen, just like we have right now. And her, her teammates are all over the world. So I think not only is empathy critical, which I completely agree with you, Martha, but I also think we need to look at it from a business aspect where they're going to, we are no longer going to have our colleagues on the team in the same room at the same time all the time. They're going to have to be able to work in a global enterprise right within any business. Um, businesses do no, no longer need to hire somebody who's less than a 45 minute drive from their main headquarters. It just doesn't exist anymore. They don't need that. We can do what we're doing right now. We could be working on a, on a project uh, with people from literally Nigeria, India, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and we could be working on a project right now. And I think this is going to become the norm rather than the, ex the exception. So to have these experiences, including the empathy, including the understanding of, of everybody all over this world, um, it's going to also become, I think, a very critical part of their of their business experience as well. Uh, Yogesh, how about you? Yeah, uh, in my opinion, uh, no doubt uh, technology is uh, nowadays breaking all the barriers. <coughs> that, uh, uh, in my opinion, classroom it is not within the four walls. Now, uh, nowadays uh, we are uh, learning globally and uh, working globally to resolve the various issues, okay? And for that, uh, we have to connect with the other people's, other students, we can say. Uh, for example, uh, any issue we can take, if we work globally, then we can uh, take out the better ideas, share the better ideas, and we can resolve that issue uh, effectively. Uh, as compared to the condition where we are uh, working uh, uh, in a continent, we can say, or in a country, uh, that is the main advantage. Uh, and the technology, no doubt, it is very beneficial in resolving all the issues uh, uh, which we are facing. Uh, we are nowadays uh, more connected, more uh, thinking globally, and uh, that is the main thing. Uh, I am in favor of uh, that connection, not only at the level of uh, students, but also uh, at the level of uh, teachers, educators, policy makers, all should connect, think globally, and then as per act globally, so that uh, quite easily we can achieve all the targets uh, uh, which uh, we are looking to achieve. Okay. 
uh, that, uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Absolutely. And it, and it is so important. So it sounds like we have agreed on the why, the idea of empathy, the idea of working with uh, like-minded people across the globe. Uh, all of these things are, are so true. So the big question, of course, is we all agree it's important. So how do we do this? How do we do this uh, with, within a classroom of 20 some kids and uh, from maybe the schools like Martha, who I would guess has a lot of technology, to maybe schools that have very little to, to maybe even no technology. How do we make this? So we've, we've all agreed it's critical. So now how do we make it happen? Who wants to go first? All right, Kemi. Okay, I, I want to go first because I'm from an experience where we have little or no technology. And uh, so, but it's just so amazing that with a laptop, and I normally use a hotspot, I can actually connect classrooms to, to the globe, you know. I've had quite a number of um, cl classroom connections. I live, I live in a suburban area, and so we don't really have much of this. Most of the schools around there don't have much inf um, technology infrastructure. And so we, sometimes I can, sometimes some schools don't even have, have a projector. So sometimes I have to get a laptop that has a wide screen, I find somewhere to place it on, and then I connect via Skype, you know, to a classroom across the continent and all that. But it's, I mean, it's what the, whatever hassles or stress or whatever it is you have to do to make these connections, because when you see the excitement in the eyes of these kids, realizing that, oh, I'm meeting somebody from another country, you know, because for me, it, it's, it's a possibility that wouldn't really have been for most of them if these connections weren't, if technology didn't afford for these connections. They may not even have known places beyond their immediate local environment. And here I am taking them, not just beyond their immediate local environment, but beyond the continent to other continents, other countries. And they're realizing that, though I don't have all what these kids have, but we are similar. You know, we both have two eyes, as basic as that, one nose and all that. And, you know, sometimes in, in interacting, they realize, I know what you know, and you know what I know. And so they see more of their similarities than their differences. And I guess it just broadens their horizon and their thinking. And maybe they hope that one day they get to visit these countries and all that. So uh, with, with little technology, you can actually have these connections possible. Absolutely. And um, I would be willing, and I've done this before with other groups, uh, I think one of the tricky parts when you're talking about Skype and video conferencing, thing like that, is just finding somebody on the other end. Um, I would be willing to do that with other classrooms. Uh, I'm an elementary principal. I can read a story right here if you want. Um, I have this set up in my office. And it's just sort of for those people that are maybe nervous about how do we get it started, I would be willing, and I'm sure maybe some of us, I don't want to speak for other people, but you know, we'd be willing to do that because sometimes just that first step really opens up uh, the, op the opportunities. Uh, I'm sure there's all over the thing you could find me. Uh, my Twitter's at Dr. Furman, at Dr. Furman. Find me anywhere you need to. And I'd be willing to do that because I do believe it's hard to get started. Martha, can we hear something from you? Yeah, I was about to say, this is such a layered question, because when you're talking about how do you get started with global collaboration, there's the technology side of it, but there's also the support that's required and the connections that's required to, to venture on that journey. And so having experiences in two very different schools, um, you know, it's, been, it's definitely been a journey. So I'm coming from Kimmy's point of view where the the STEM school that I was at actually had very little technology coming from Title I and we were trying to get grants to get things off the ground and running so it was often me with my phone and Skype trying to connect via my personal Wi-Fi you know because our, our bandwidth couldn't handle any of that now that's that's changed over the past 10 years but um you know, things like that. But I don't think it's always technology either, as much as I love it. Uh, but there, there's this wonderful thing called Pen Pals. There's question and, number three, by the way. So <laughs> you, we, we can move right on to that one too. We can use both of them. Is the technology uh, essential? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so there is a wonderful thing called uh, Pen Pals. And I know we have ePals now. Um, but I mean, we've been doing this for ages, even with, uh, what was that, Stanley? traveling around the world and in all of that. Flat Stanley. 
Yes, we Black have that family. Yep, I love it. So the idea of needing to connect with others has always been there. Technology is just changing the way that we're doing that. And now we have ePals. Um, and the school that I'm at now is one-to-one -one iPads, which blows my mind. But now we're using Flipgrid and we're using, you know, Skype and all those things. So my, my role has changed. I used to be the one that coordinates everything for our whole school, um, for all of our teachers. And now it's really me teaching them how to take ownership of that and use it in a way that's beneficial for them. But I would say the hardest thing that we have is connecting um, officially with other people. Oftentimes when you're trying to do mystery Skypes or projects, technology doesn't work sometimes on the day that you're trying to connect with them or, you know, the time difference gets messed up. And so, you know, or sometimes people just don't show up. And so that's often scary for people. So Rob, I like that you mentioned just getting your feet wet and just doing a read aloud. Like, you know, we have global read aloud in February using little not little, but like big days like that, that everyone's online all at the same time doing the same thing is a great way to start. And then once you feel confident in your ability and see that impact that you're making, moving forward with more specific projects. Yes. And on top of that, I know we're talking about the, the world and the globe, but even just to get started, just go down the street. I mean, just yeah. to get out of the four walls, is going is going to be a benefit um you know it may not be easy to connect with somebody in italy your very first time but if you would connect with somebody from you know pennsylvania to florida georgia to texas one of those type of things at least it gives you that that experience of using the technology and getting those sort of those nerves out of the way I uh, like that. Sorry, just no, going no, go off ahead. of that. I love that you mentioned that because the title one school that i worked at was in savannah and so some of our kids have never even been to the beach or to the mountains there they just don't have the finances to be able to do that so 20 miles down the road um so one of my very first skypes was skyping with someone in our mountainous regions and so you know they were like oh my goodness you have deer in your backyard and we're sitting here with like flat coastal land and so for them it was a huge deal so i like that you mentioned even someone in your own state getting your feet wet with that Absolutely. Uh, Amita or Yogesh, you wanna, Amita, you want to go? Yeah, yeah. I would like to share one thing. During Skypeathon, um, Microsoft, the most uh, festive event is Skypeathon. And uh, it was a two-day event that we get. And uh, now my students are more curious than me to host the session. They are working 24 by 7 uh, to interact with the other classes around the globe. Last year, we uh, met around 30 educators from different countries and they learned a lot. And that means a lot means in the assembly, they are uh, sharing their things with the juniors and with the seniors because I do have the classes of 9th and 10th at that time. Grade uh, 9th and 10th, I was taking and um, the student was so so uh, I cannot express the things in the world. The uh, feelings of them are uh, the sparks I can see in their eyes when they are interacting or sharing. So uh, the global collaboration uh, means a lot for them also. So uh, we should together so we can do anything. Alone we cannot. Uh, Kemi, uh, I would like to add one thing for you. We, uh, she is the coach of mine in uh, last year's, this year, we went for E2 Education Exchange program and uh, she is my coach. You remember? Yes, she is my coach and uh, we uh, work together for uh, like six to seven hours. Yes, so uh, we learn from each other the uh, things that we get is uh, wonderful. When I came from there, I implement so many things with my students. We get the resources from there. So resources only doesn't matter for the thing. Actually, it is the educator who is the one uh, who gives the path, who carves the path for the, their students. 
i think that is very much required uh for the things to be implemented excellent thank you amita your guess yeah uh, no doubt uh, technology uh, it is doing a lot but uh, as far as uh, uh, i am concerned uh, we are located in himalayas and uh, our school is uh, <coughs> in the rural area uh, no doubt uh, sometime uh, we are not getting uh, the facility uh, we are not getting the connectivity even uh, in such cases uh, we are uh, little bit disconnected from the world we feel like that uh, otherwise what is there uh, we are trying hard uh, to provide uh, each and every facility Uh, opportunity to the students uh, through skype uh, through flip uh, flip grid or uh, uh, like uh, such programs uh, direct exchange with the scientist uh, at the national and international level we are providing the opportunities but uh, due to the location sometime uh, we feel disconnected uh, or or sometime we face uh, difficulties otherwise uh, through the technology uh, we are learning a lot even uh, students are very happy to learn exchange the ideas exchange the views with the other scientists educators throughout the world thank you absolutely excellently said um martha what you're writing right there is going to be our uh, our next question you like to jump ahead don't you i could tell <laughs> all right before we get, get excited i'm <laughs> sure uh before we do that and you could actually use this for the next one let's go round robin here each one of us take an opportunity i would like to give one piece of technology that we can uh offer in terms of an idea we already said flip, flip grid and those type of things skype let's try to dig into our bank here and see if we can come up with any other ideas. Uh, let's all give one technology idea. And then let's also try to come up with one way that we could do this uh, if we do not have uh, a high-end version of connectivity, things like that. Let's see if we can come up with uh, almost like a laundry list that we could share out. Uh, let's, start, let's start off with Kemi. Put you on the hot spot here. You're the first. Make sure you unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, sorry, because I have a lot of activity around me, so I keep myself mute. Well, I um not I use Flip Grid, but I use Skype a lot, and um, but sometimes we don't know there has been an update on Skype, which allows you to record your conversations, your connections, and also the translator. So with the translator, you don't have the barrier of language, and so you could communicate with any class from in any country, even if you don't speak the same language. And no, you still can understand each other because it automatically translates what you say or the chats that you type up and all that. So I am more of a Skype person, and I, I guess, and um, I have also knowledge of Libri, but mostly that's, those are the tools I use to connect um, with classes. But again, one thing about uh, Skype, you could also, you don't have to have the synchronous um, connection. You could have a slow, just like you do slow chats in, in Twitter, where you do your recording and whenever the next person has the time or the connectivity, they can watch your recording and then reply, you know, to you. And so you can have that slow, um, asynchronous connections, even through using those devices. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, who wants to go next with a hand raise? Okay. I'll go next, I guess. <laughs> Don't all jump at once here, guys. No, just kidding. Um, I, I would think in terms of not having uh, a lot of connectivity or even any connectivity, um, I, I would think we would want to look at, uh, obviously, we could do letter writing, which we've done for hundreds of years. Um, but even more so than that, I do know that there are other, like in my town, we have a uh, Slovenian heritage area. Uh, we have uh, an Italian, Little Italy type of area. You know, all because we can't maybe get connected with them in Italy, there would still be people within our area where you could bring them in and have those conversations. Um, think of think of many field trips to areas in your area that maybe uh, have a have an ethnic slant, like we have an Irish town and things like that. Um, 
you know, all because we don't necessarily have the technology, I don't think that gives us a reason to ignore the fact that we still need to be able to get these kids involved with people from other areas um, because of everything we said earlier. Um, so even though we can't necessarily talk to them at their time in their country when they're actually physically there, that doesn't mean there aren't other people around that we can't find a way to get them into us. Uh, you know, it, it is that important, I think, to try. Um, anybody want to add add a tech or non-tech one? All right, Martha, I'm putting you on the hot spot here. Give me one. Um, so I definitely have my favorites and the easiest to use. Um, but I guess my tip or trick would be just ways that you can start small. Um, and things that we've mentioned, like the Skypathon or um, Global World Read Aloud Day or in America, like Read Across America Day or something like that. But there's other ones like virtual Valentines or awesome squiggles. Uh, little things here and there that can cross content areas. Um, but I, I love the idea of good old fashioned pen pals. Like that's just a lost art to me and is so amazing that you could send, you know, cards across the world and end up. Um, although I did have a friend in uh, Southern Russia, we ended up using YouTube videos instead of actually writing pen pals because for her her mail gets lost all the time and so she can't do regular good old-fashioned pen pals because we were writing christmas cards to each other and she's like no 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 youtube would be much easier for me and i was like wow okay i hadn't thought about that so um there are things to think about where i think something i take for granted sending mail for her was difficult so um yeah i think I guess what I'm and trying to get to Martha, is finding what works yeah. for you. And even on top of that, you said something that was really fantastic there, and I think we glossed over it a little too quickly. Sorry. What what an experience for your classroom for them to realize that this person in Russia has a hard time getting hard mail. I mean, something, mm -hmm. something that a lot of areas would take for granted, and what an experience your kids had learning that. I mean, that's yeah. I, I think that's a very small version of what this is all about. Um, especially kids that are come from more affluent areas. They're like, what, you don't get mail? Well, yeah, it, it can be that tricky. Um, how about Amita or Yogesh? Either of you want to chime in on any ideas? I think Amita's jumping for it here. Yeah. There you go. Yes. Uh, Rob, I agree with you. Uh, not only most of the students are coming from the different areas. They don't have that much resources. I do agree. Uh, but the passion that took them to that path also. We have the students from the government schools too. They don't have so much resources. Even they don't have food for them. Or uh, uh, So technology is a, uh, like a word for them to learn. So for that purpose, we are uh, serving on the community basis. We have the extra classes for them and uh, Skype is one of the wonderful tool and that is my favorite tool too. I, my class is very much uh, uh, tech savvy. They are uh, using Swayze, OneNote and uh, they are sharing uh, their um, class notes on class notebooks and they are very much uh, well aware about the Flipgrid. They, um, they don't have problem in using any of the tools but the one thing that i uh, really want to add by them is uh, when i was doing the global project i initiated global project on way to peace uh, in which educators from different countries have participated and we too have the students who don't understand english even they don't know how to uh, like share the things with each other. So my students make the cards for them and uh, make them understand what actually they want. So technology nowadays make the life better. Uh, before then we had before 10 or 12 years back, say even last four or five years, we don't have uh, we are not using these tools very frequently, but after the association or collaboration with the 
uh, Microsoft has envisaged us uh, with these tools. So I'm happy that uh, they are coming out with flying colors and they are doing so well with the technology and they are now imparting the training to the students um, with autism. They don't have uh, accessibility problems like so uh, it's good to be with them while learning and uh, sharing the things like this. Absolutely. Um, and, and and for those of you that do have the connectivity and whatnot, I know that there's a um, a video conference very similar to this called Easy Talk. It's it's completely free, and you can get this type of uh, group conversations going as well. Uh, there's been a lot of good chat going on with uh, people talking about Twitter and um, Flipgrid, yeah. obviously being a big one. Uh, hashtag Grid Pals. You can find virtual pen pals in in that uh, in that way as well. Um, let's let's get to our, our last question here, and we've sort of touched on it here and there, but I think Martha had a good answer in chat. I wanted to go over this with us. How do we find other classrooms or people to partner with on these collaborative projects? And one of the ideas you had going through here was a good one, Martha. Let's let's bring that one up. Um, I I definitely think it's all about your professional learning network. Um, and finding people and the programs that you use, the interfaces that you use uh, routinely. I dabble in a little bit of everything. So Instagram, Twitter, uh, but honestly, a lot of my global collaborations come from Google Plus communities um, that are specific for what I'm looking for, the programs like Flipgrid or um, for Skype or Google Hangouts, I use a lot too. And so, Whatever I'm looking for, the platform that I've learned, I go to to find to find those people. But um, I don't want to discount finding connections at conferences and literally taking yourself out of your your physical space and going and meeting other people, um, like at ISTE or the Microsoft uh, panels that we do through all around the world. Um, and Tim, I don't know. Google Plus may be going away soon. I haven't heard anything about that. That that's going to make me cry if that's true or not. Sorry, I, I just saw that. I did hear that it that it could be going away. I just heard that okay. recently as well. Well, as long as they replace it with something else, I'm okay. Yes. And, and like you said, going to conferences and and the interesting thing is um, hashtags. Hashtags, yeah. The uh, the other interesting thing is the fact that you know we're here and I, and, I, and I really can't stress that enough like those of us that are in India and Georgia and, and all over the place right in Nigeria um, you know, this would be a way to start you know contact one of us and we can help you find other people in other areas obviously we have uh, a large base of educators that we could connect out for you um, if you don't so we can we can help kind of get that ball rolling for you um, and, and it is important, just like Martha said, to go out on your own as the teacher to connect because mm -hmm. aren't, we, aren't we the model? Aren't we the, the, don't we want our kids to do that? That's what we're trying to get them to do. If we can't do it, we certainly can't help them educate them on how to do that. So, mm -hmm. so I think Martha makes a good point that we really need to take that first step as the, as the teacher in the classroom to figure out how do I connect and then I'm going to teach my kids how to connect. All right, yeah, so we're, I, we're almost out of, absolutely, Kemi, go ahead. Yeah, just, just quickly, um, one of the best, uh, easier, easier way also is to connect. We have the Skype in the classroom.com. And, and so you have all the Skype activities, you have the guest speakers, you have the virtual trips and all you need to do as a newbie is to just make a request for a session and then you'll be, the session will be accepted or the timing may be changed or whatever. But I think it's an easy place going to Skype in the classroom.com to just find out those who are available to Skype, the, their availability is always shown and uh, it's, you can just look for what you're looking for and just send a request. Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you. All right. We're almost out of time here. So why don't we all take one more chance to say what's on our mind, get our passion out on this one. And uh, what do you want to leave this group with in terms of the idea of using technology to connect outside this classroom? You want to start with uh, Kemi? Um, sorry, I got distracted a bit here. Uh, um, well, we using technology in the classroom, 
opens up the breaks down the classroom walls, opens up you know collaboration like we talked about, and also makes helps us to build the digital citizenship skills that our students need to learn because we of the present um, digital world that we live in, and so they they have to use these things to prepare, prepare themselves for the future they are entering into. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Yogesh, you want to go next? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, technology is uh, breaking the uh, all all the type of uh, barriers and uh, uh, making uh, this world uh, smaller, more understandable. And uh, I am quite sure uh, with the technology, uh, we are uh, we we can achieve all the things, all the targets set up at all the levels. Okay, so uh, with the technology, we are moving ahead, and we will move ahead. And uh, let's hope to make the world a better place to live for all the uh, means uh, people on the earth. Thank you, Yogesh. I love your passion, man. It, it, it's addicting. Thank you so much. Amita? Um, uh, the big thing I would like to add is uh, I am using technology for making my class more interesting by using uh, the tools like Skype is one of those, but I use Minecraft. Minecraft is a gaming uh, stroke that really engages my class a lot. I, the things that they could understand uh, while taking a time with gaming, it makes it possible within a second. So uh, like a subject chemistry that uh, really not uh, mess, uh, that really not uh, taking into the things by the students easily because chemistry is not an easy uh, cup of tea for everyone. Maths and chemistry is not easy for every student to learn at any level. But uh, through gaming, I understand or uh, I myself viewed that uh, they learn the things easily and is able to implement it into a real life application. I taking them to the virtual trips by using the MSc accounts, my MSc accounts. And uh, I involved some guest experts from uh, different countries related to different subjects. So uh, that really engages them. That's all. Excellent, thank you so much. Martha. Uh, no pressure. So I, I believe that our desire to connect with others is an innate. Like that is just a part of who we are as a human race. And um, I don't want your fear or the people around you to have a fearful uh, vision of connecting with others. If the technology doesn't work, that's great. Try it again tomorrow. Or try pen pals or try whatever you can so don't let your fear i don't think anyone in here has that fear because obviously we're all here trying to learn together today maybe reach out to a colleague that may be fearful of connecting with others and take them under your wing and start that ripple effect in your school to try to break down those classroom barriers find what works for you whether it's minecraft skypeathons projects Find what you're passionate about, share that with your students, and, and learn from that. So, um, yeah, I think that's great. I ramble a lot. Um, I do want to thank you, Rob, for hosting us today and for your very uh, poignant questions. <laughs> well, thank you, Martha. Um, what, what I would like to leave with is something that I've seen over my 20 years here in education. My parents are in education, so I literally grew up as a as a child listening to all these things. Um, we're living in like the Wild West of education. I think when they write about us in the history books, they're gonna be like, wow, they did some of these things really wrong. And some of the things are gonna be like, wow, they really hit a nail on the head and they really didn't know what they were doing. Um, so it's interesting. And I think the, the biggest thing that we're all saying here is, uh, don't get frustrated and try. Just like you know, when they were going out to the Wild West in, in America here and traveling, traveling out there, not having a clue what was going on, and hoping for the best. Um, 
it's sort of trial and error, but the idea is just don't give up because it is that important. Uh, we, we live in a very tiny little blue ball here on earth now, and it's getting tinier with technology. So we have to be able to um, not only help our kids with empathy and understanding, but also to be able to work together um, as a group uh, to fix these these problems of the world. And, and I think what your guest shed was uh, spot on. We've got to make this world a better place. And it starts with our kids. You know, this will be the generation very soon that's going to be running this little blue marble that we're all on. And if, if we don't help them get to that point that it's going to make a positive thing, we're going to be in trouble. Um, so we have to start. We have to start now. It's, it's on all of our educators' shoulders to do whatever we can to help our kids uh, um, understand the importance of being a part of this of this globe. So thank you all so much. Uh, we're done here for, for this morning or evening, wherever you all are. And uh, thank you so much for your time. And thank you to Michael and Tim for setting this up and working through this with us. Thank you.